a uh, fun fact, you cannot actually tickle yourself. Can't tickle yourself. Even if you try, can't do it. Try it. <laughs> Liar. No, you can't tickle yourself because um, part of tickling is not knowing where you'll be tickled and in what way, so you can't prepare for it. Okay, but your brain will tell you what you're going to do, so you can't tickle yourself. <laughs> Liar. Guess what we're talking about? Today. We're talking about today. Aren't you talking about cars? Hmm. Cars is not a bad guess. There is much to be said about cars, in fact. But we're not talking about cars. We're talking about... Jeans. Jeans. Yeah, not those jeans. Those jeans. Learning stuff. Rick the You know something about jeans, don't you? Anything? Have you ever heard the word before? You've never heard the word gene before? In your whole life, you've never heard the word gene. Ever. Not even one time. Hey, go easy on the kid. Genetics? DNA? <laughs> What's DNA? The DNA is in your blood. It, it brings all the blood and the heart makes it. No. DNA is in your blood. It's in every cell of your body. And the DNA is the plan for how to build your body. Okay, so the genes, your genes, and the DNA are the plan. Okay, so as you're growing up, it, it gives your body the plan for how to build you. Does a fan have DNA? No, because it's not alive. Now, we share a common basic DNA or a common basic genetic structure to every living thing. Okay, because the first living thing can be traced back to Earth about, you know, 1.6 billion years ago. The first very simple, simple one cell organism, they had DNA. And did you know that we share 50% of the same genetic structure as a banana? A banana. What? As a, as a banana. But we eat bananas. We can still share DNA with a banana, though we eat it. Yoink. How is that possible? Uh... What that says is there's something in common between us and bananas. What is the same between us and a banana? Forget about banana. A plant. A banana tree or any plant. What's the same about us and any plant? Well, a plant has a texture, and... It, it has skin. Yes, that doesn't feel the same as us, but it still has skin. It does. That is one similarity. What's another similarity? Also, when you grow a plant, it, it grows into a tree. The word grow in itself. We grow, plants grow. Yes. So there are certain similarities, and because we have those certain similarities, we're going to have certain similar genes to plants. And so we share 50% of our genetic makeup with a banana. Wild as it sounds. Now we share a lot more genes with an animal which is similar to us, like a chimpanzee. We share like 98% of our DNA with a chimpanzee. We're very, very similar. How do we pass on our genes? If we want to switch, if we want to give genes to a person, then we would have to get rid of some of our blood and put it in them. No, you can't do that. It can only happen at, at, a, at, a, at a very, very uh, small level. I mean, you, you, you can't share it through your blood, okay? You can't transfer your DNA. If you get a blood transfusion from someone else, you don't take in their DNA. That doesn't happen. No. DNA can only uh, mix with other DNA through the process of, you know, reproduction, so... Or birth. Which is reproduction, yes. That's the only way in which DNA can mix. 
So when any being is born, that could be bacteria or a plant or it could be us, its, uh, its DNA will not be exactly the same as its parents because the DNA is a very long sequence with a lot of parts to it. And those parts will get shuffled. And this is called random variation. Random so variation. I could have been born as a banana? Exactly. Imagine this. Imagine there's a horse. Now there's a kind of gene called the Hox gene. Hawks. The Hox gene is very important for the development of the body structure. Okay? That our bodies are split down the middle. Did you ever notice that? You've got one arm here, one arm here, and one arm here. You're split down the middle. One arm, one arm, one leg, one leg. Okay? That's because of the functioning of the Hox gene. Now, other animals aren't like this, like an octopus or a jellyfish. Okay, the structure of their bodies is kind of different from ours. Yeah. Okay, so imagine there's a horse. Imagine there's a horse long time ago, and that horse gets a slightly longer neck than other horses through random variation. What happens? Is it good or bad to have a longer neck? Because then, well, the horse can reach stuff and could eat long plants on with the leaves. Okay, there could also be a bad thing about having a longer neck. You know, longer neck can also be a bad thing. It can make it more difficult to run or something like that. So it depends on the situation. If suddenly the plants have grown a little bit taller or something, or to access plants that are a little bit taller, the longer neck could be good. And that's how a giraffe got made. Over a long period of time, some horse's neck got longer and longer and longer. And then, when that horse with a slightly longer neck has a baby, that baby has a good chance of having a slightly longer neck too, because it's passed on the gene. Okay? So the mother's gene and the father's gene get mixed. So maybe the baby won't have a slightly longer neck. Maybe he'll have a normal neck. But maybe he'll have a longer neck when the genes get mixed. If he does have a longer neck, and that gives him access to the higher plants, then there's a good chance that he'll do very good, and he'll have a baby that also has a long neck. Or he'll have a short neck. Yeah. Well, I mean, random variation works with long periods of time and gradual change. So, genes. Very important stuff, eh? So you don't want to lose your genes, right? Yes, but when when you die, all of your all of your DNA dies because the body dies with you. Because when you die, all of your DNA starts to decompose and the blood dries up. Ah. The DNA starts to disappear or break apart. It's, uh, it's, that's a good question. I, I, I think the, the DNA does survive for a, for a particular period of time because we can, we can retrieve the DNA from, from animals that have died a long time ago, though. So, it, uh, yeah, maybe it'll, it'll decompose, but it'll do it much more slowly than the body. Well, some animals actually eat the decomposed thing. Yeah. The body. So do they, uh, do they take the DNA of that animal? No, right. but they only eat the rest of the parts. That's right. If you eat something, its DNA doesn't go into your DNA, right? Right, because right. they don't pick up the DNA, but sometimes they do. But it doesn't transfer it. It goes in their stomachs, and once they do the number two thing, then the DNA is nothing but just poop. That's a wrap!